Hey everybody, this is Guru Amin coming to you with a great show today with Dr. Tony Huge, my friend of seven years. And today we're going to clear up some of these uh, rumors that are out there about my friend. give you the story straight about a little bit of background about things that are going on and a little bit about a future about what's going to happen with Tony. Tony, welcome to my channel. How are you? Good to see you again. Hey, Guru Amin. Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, man. How are you? How's everything going over there? Yeah, going okay. Uh, excited. I've got some Mexican food coming pretty soon after this uh, call, so I'm really looking forward to that. And just so everybody knows, you are in Thailand. Yeah, I'm in Thailand, and they know nothing about Mexico here, but they do have Mexican food. It just costs a lot more than other food. It's like a delicacy here. Nice, nice. Um, so everybody knows that uh, you're not on the run. Um, I wanted to clear that up because I speak to you pretty much every day, and um, I wanted people to First off, know that you're not on the run because there's no reason you should be on the run because you've done nothing wrong. So I want everybody to know that right now. I've known Tony for seven years. When I first met him, he flew me out to California, gave me the keys to the Benz, gave me the keys to the front door, treated me like I was family. And I can tell you and everybody, I could tell everyone this, you know, all the videos you see on YouTube, that is really him. That's how he is. It's not an act. It's not a show. He's just giving everyone a taste of his real life for people that may not like it or they think it's a show or they think he's trying to, like, push something on you. He's not. He's just displaying his life for you guys to see. And I want to tell everyone this right now. Tony is not the kind of person that is confrontational. He backs away from confrontation. He wouldn't hurt a fly. In, in all honesty, he wouldn't hurt a fly. I mean, he's the kind of person that if you were like, you know, uh, give me ten dollars, he'd just give it to you. He wouldn't. He wouldn't even argue about it. He'd just give it to you. So, I want everybody to know right now that this man is not confrontational. Any accusations that you may hear about him, they're just false. They're just YouTube gossip, and it's just not true. This guy is the nicest guy. He really is one of the absolute nicest people I've ever met in my life. So, Tony, why don't you give everybody a little bit of background about you and I and how we met and all that. Oh, yeah. How we met was um, Coach Trevor and I were making videos, and you messaged on something and said, some of those theories that Trevor's talking about in the videos sound really familiar. And uh, your name was Amin on it. And uh, so then I said... I asked Coach Trevor, he must have said something else because then I asked Coach Trevor, like, is this, who, who is this mean guy that's messaging me? Like, he knows your protocols. And he, he said, Amin, Guru Amin, the Guru Amin. And uh, I said, I don't know. I never heard of this person before. So, like, do you want me to message him back? Because, you know, I would get a lot of messages. And so I don't know who who you are. I had never seen you on media or content or anything like that. So coach Trevor said he wanted to talk to you. Right. And he had so many questions for you because he said that one of the, the thing that opened his mind to how to the advanced level of bodybuilding chemistry that, that he was opened up to was he had studied every coach's protocols, every, every, top bodybuilder coaches protocols because coach Trevor was really well connected to the underground and he collected all this information for his private self. He was just obsessed. You know, he was like our other friend that gets obsessed with research in all the right. same ways. Mm -hmm. And also coach Trevor was absolutely brilliant. He had an accident, hit his head and, and then that affected his, you know, the way he speaks and stuff like that, but he was still, still always pretty brilliant. So he, uh, he wanted to talk to you because he said that he, your protocols opened up his mind to what's like a different way to approach bodybuilding chemistry. And so coach, the, the foundation of a lot of 
Coach Trevor's approaches, you know, yeah, there's lots of different approaches and for lots of different things, but the foundation of some of the like interesting approaches to bodybuilding that were things that I hadn't heard of also before for Trevor that originally sourced from you uh, were sourced from you. Yeah. So um, it was kind of interesting because you were helping people on the underground right? and you weren't really trying to get fame or anything like that. And, and there's a lot of guys like this, actually. There's a, like, like people think, you know, of whoever's the top ranking people on, let's say, YouTube or a forum or something like that are the experts. But bodybuilding is a weird, a really weird sport. And coaches usually don't want attention for a number of reasons that you and I know, but, you know, a lot of people might not realize, like, some of the best coaches will actually not want attention. Right. So, yeah. So that was it was a good experience because I, I got to learn then i got connected to you and i got to learn also i believe it was facebook i could be wrong but i believe it was facebook messenger and i think that when i first contacted you you were very polite you didn't know who i was you told me you were going through the jungle in china to get to a place where they were going to be making uh sarms i remember that and uh you said you would contact me back i think it was like seven hours later or something when you finally got through because there was going to be no reception and then you contacted me back and then shortly after that when we got back to america you flew me out there and you know i think the rest is kind of history we started making some great videos together uh we've met in florida a couple times i was with you in in florida in the beginning where you did the uh nationals and i helped you for three shows you won first place in two of them. The Sacramento, what was the other one? Uh, I got the overall in Los Angeles muscle yeah. contest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I won my class in Lake Tahoe on the SARMs only cycle. And uh, yeah, it, I competed a lot. I, in nationals, I got 11th out of 43 in my class. The first time, yeah. So, which is pretty good for the first we time. Made, we made videos down there. Very short prep. Right. It's a very short prep. It's, I remember you eating a box of cereal in the middle of the night during car depletion. I was like, wow, this guy's making it difficult for me. But we still pulled it off. We, we also, one, one record-breaking thing I think we did was, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was eight or nine pounds I had you lose in one day. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. During the day, too, right? Yeah. It was weird because I, I had been practically doing – keto and i was really you know what happens is i i keep my body around you know eight or nine percent body fat year round so i can prepare for a competition in just a couple weeks right I don't You're think, always but I, then again i'm not a pro so my, my expectations of myself are much lower but i can get stage ready stage shredded so i look like i belong on stage in at any time in in two weeks right that's kind of my goal to keep maintain my physique at that level all the time, despite not working out and dieting that, you know, religiously. So I, uh, it was really close to the competition and I had to do what I do, which is crash diet. That's uh, one of my, you know, uh, I was going to say secret weapon, but it's not, it's like fasting, you know? Right. And uh, you were telling me about how my metabolism had slowed down too much and we had to pick remember, up metabolism yeah. and all this. And I'm like, but I'm, I, see, I'm for classic physique. I have too much muscle. I mean, I could always lose water and I could always lose fat, but the truth is I'd have to also lose some muscle. So that's why I was okay crash dieting. But my weight wouldn't come down. And I was uh, coming right, I was coming, uh, you know, 24 hours before weigh-ins and I was like 10 pounds over still. Right. Some ridiculous amount. I, I don't know what it was, but it was, it was ridiculous. And then, so yeah, you had me calibrate my diet and everything else that day and then... I was able to drop. Was, was it ten pounds? It was. It was quite a bit. I think it was a record breaking for both of us. But I, do you remember how I did it and what I told you that you were? You didn't. You, at first, you weren't really sure about it. But then, as you started doing it, I was telling you to check your weight throughout the day. You kept losing a pound, a pound, a pound, a pound. Do you remember what we did? Uh, some of it. Um, yeah, but the but the the interesting thing about losing the weight is that it was. Uh, I was I was obviously flat mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I knew, you know, I knew I would, I knew I would, car I needed to carve up in order to fill out and look good on stage, but how could I carve up if I have to wait until weigh-ins, you know, and then right. carve up and then that's a limited window of time and, you know, 
dangerous to spill over. So, uh, yeah, you had me um, take very small amounts of carbs and right. manipulate the sodium and potassium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dropped ten pounds, and I actually looked. I looked hard. I looked like a, you know, like a bodybuilder is supposed to look instead of flat. And I remember the first thing you said was, "If I eat carbs, when I gain weight?" And I'm like, "Not if you do it like this." <laughs> yeah. And then as the years went by, we made a lot of videos, and your first YouTube channel got taken down. Some videos we made, I I believe, got you know over a hundred thousand views. Am I right about that? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean the old channels were were really hopping. They were huge, and and you were on some of the greatest videos. Yeah, then those channels. I mean, there's many channels that have been deleted. You know, many, how many, many channels have been deleted? Three platforms. Hmm? How many? How many of your channels have been deleted so far? Oh, probably a probably. I mean, keep in mind they're not they're not my channels. They're like it's someone else who always makes it and then features me or something like this, sure. right? Like I, I, I never, I, I never manage a, a YouTube channel. Right. So anyways, it's, um, probably like six. Wow. <laughs> something, let's, let's say at least four and four. Yeah. two Facebook accounts and two Instagram accounts and yeah, countless other things. What would you, con what do you, uh, contribute to these? shutting down of you like censorship of you primarily you because um i think you're one of the first people to really be censored like this am i right well people probably wouldn't understand it before but now maybe maybe they understand it it's the same thing that happened to donald trump it's the same thing yeah. that happened to alex jones it's roger the Stone. thing that happened to andrew tate yeah roger <clears throat> Stone. so it's it's mostly political and I know that sounds crazy because like we're talking about steroids and lady boys, right? Things that, you know, they want to censor. Uh, but it, it's, there's a, it is the root, root, root cause is politics. Right. And that's something that unfortunately, like what's happening in America is affecting the whole world. And sure. unfortunately it's not going in a good direction. No. So there's going to be more and more censorship and pretty much anything that deviates from what you call it's called. It's Say not that. It's anything that goes against their agenda. So we can start from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything that goes against the political agenda, you know, or what the matrix wants people to think and believe and pay attention to it, it's going to get censored and it's going to happen more and more. And there can always be some small justification for any individual censorship. But the truth is it, it comes down to, um, in the end, a, a person who is trained and biased and has a certain f filter perspective that they look at it through. And anything that is not, uh, you know, conforming to the culture that the matrix wants, which, yeah, I think some people would say, oh, but what Tony Huge does is dangerous and this and that. But I mean, the truth is there's nobody is hurt by anything that I say or do. Nobody like goes and injects steroids because I said to inject steroids. I'm I'm showing the good and the bad and, and everything. It's just truth. I mean, there's no spin on it. There's no like there's no like uh, lying to try to convince anybody to do anything just pure honesty and like I'll show you exactly what I do. And yeah. And, and, and so it's, uh, it gets, it's going to get censored more and more. And, um, you know, I could, I could always at any time, anybody can sell out and adopt the values of the matrix. Uh, if, if you want to make a lot of money, you just sell out and just do what the matrix wants you to do. I mean, then life is easy and you make a lot of money, but then you're stuck in it. Your, your, men, your mind gets stuck in it, your life gets stuck in it, and then you're trapped. Let's talk about most recently, your recent channel that got deleted, and the, th the things that you've talked to me about, because um, I was also asking you, you know, was it the injection of the lady boy? But then you told me that you looked it up and you saw all these things on other people's channels already existed. So let's discuss that really quick and what your feelings are about this recent channel that got uh, taken down. Well, there's no, there's no element 
there's no single element in any of my videos that doesn't exist on some other channel that isn't censored. So you can find a way to censor any channel. And then it's a question of does this channel challenge a subservient um, respect for authority and lack of critical thinking approach? Uh, yeah. And, and I mean, recently, I, it was just when I start thinking when I when I start thinking about it, like um, the way that the way that I my perspective is like a big pyramid coming sure. from the top down. And like when we're talking about like the smallest things of censorship, it always kind of just goes up to the pyramid. I realize people are just really aren't going to understand unless they do either experience censorship themselves or if they, unless they really look into like someone else who's been deplatformed, why they got deplatformed, when they got deplatformed, how they got deplatformed. So like for most people, I think the Donald Trump thing is probably the best example, uh, if you really look into how it happened and why it happened, um, it's it's really scary the the level of power that a few people hold over human thought. Yes, and also the programming that goes into it. Because while they censor you, they promote other things that really. I mean, uh, Tucker Carlson did a video uh, did a show about this last night about TikTok in China. And how the content that they that the Chinese people are allowed to see in their version of TikTok, which China China basically is a parent company that owns the whole thing, is for kids. It's very educational. It's very positive, and so forth. And the videos that get promoted in America are videos that I would say are pretty much degrading to human behavior. And they they want they're trying to dumb down our society. And of course, they promote a, a heavy. Uh, heavy promotion of LGBT and transgender, um, you know, which is, it, it's neither here nor there, but, but how come we're not promoting things that are positive that are educating our kids also, you know? I, I believe you know, that- it's, you know, it's funny how much gay is pushed on us now. Like, <laughs> yeah, every time you pull up a strain, streaming TV, it's pushing gay and like every time on my Instagram, it's pushing gay and um, it's, it's, yeah, it's funny because like I could see how um, I could see how that would influence, especially children. This is what's pretty it's pretty funny. <laughs> like, okay, maybe children know they're gay at a really young age, but man, everybody's so freaked out about Tony Huge teaching people about chemistry that they're not going to end up even using until they're twenty five or thirty. My audience is older, anyways, and then we're not that concerned about the media and what the media is pushing that's like way way more significant and way manipulative very right. and forced on us like my content's not forced on anybody if you want to see it you can come see it and it's fully open and transparent and nothing's like pushing you to it or manipulating you to see it and i'm not trying to manipulate it it's mine just pure honesty and it attracts a lot of people because there's not a lot of brutally honest content out there and yet you have this other content that's total crap that is being forced on you that's trying to manipulate the way you you think about things in a in a in a way that's not advantageous to your being able to thrive in the human experience and uh that is just normal it's you know just like it's normal to drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes which is more dangerous than a lot of the drugs that are illegal um, it's also normal to just be brainwashed by the media and then not take the time and energy to go somewhere where you can actually get uncensored good information to make better decisions on and in, in your own decisions instead of the decisions being made for you. It's, you know, it's, I would say strangely enough, the paradox in this is that you are promoting a, not promoting, but you're showing your lifestyle that has to do with ladyboys too. And you would think that that because of the promotion of all these other things that they wouldn't censor you so much because of that. But the funny thing is, is that it's not really, in my opinion, I could be wrong. I don't think it's your content. I think it's you. And I think a lot of this has to do with after the traffic, uh, Nat Geo thing. And uh, I would yeah. say, I mean, if you remember, I, I was the one that had them. They contacted me first, but I was dealing with Caden. 
uh, my stepson who was dying of cancer. And I wasn't really in the right mind state to do it. So I told him, listen, I've got the perfect person for you. Interview this guy. And then they interviewed you. And they put a spin on it. And I noticed it when I saw it. I'm like, I wasn't really happy with what they, how they portrayed you. You know, it, it just wasn't part of it was you, but they put a spin on it, making you seem like um, like you weren't positive about what you were doing. When in fact, if anybody ever got to meet you, you don't push anything on anyone, and you are very positive about what you do. It's, there's no negative undertone of like the, uh, although you do say the dark side of chemistry, which I understand because it's we're not talking about amino acids and creatine. Um, so you could look at it like that. But the way they put a spin on it made you come almost look like a, a, a character that uh, that was a dark mm -hmm. character. You know what? I, do you feel that way? Yeah, and I, I guess I sort of invited that because, um, well, that's interesting. I I, I, I I sort of invited it, and I'm trying to one. I'm trying to think what my strategy was in doing that. I, yeah, I guess nobody else was doing it. I guess I. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, because nobody else had ever done what I did. And I, and I just went further and further down a path that nowhere, no one's ever gone before. I think and the, um, the bloodletting probably was, too far for the main, mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. I think when they saw the bloodletting, I think that they, they, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty graphic. And I think a lot of people looked at that as a, as kind of taboo or strange. Yeah. Things. So this is crazy. Like I've, I've, probably caused thousands of people to do their own bloodletting. Yes, you and have. I've never heard of an injury and, I, and, and it's saved a lot of people's lives. So here's something that is not a drug. It's a procedure you can do it on yourself at home. It's very healthy to do. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to pay doctors a bunch of money for this kind of stuff. I mean, someone would say, oh, but you shouldn't give yourself medical attention. Like, what else should I not do as a human being? Should I not wipe my own butt? Should I not feed myself? Should I not comb my hair? Like, geez, it's my body, and I want to have full dominion and control over my body, and I want the education to be able to do it, and I want to be able to make my own decisions about it, right? So this is like a very healthy alternative medicine type thing, and I I just showed myself doing it, and yeah, the the mainstream freaked out about it. Yeah. I mean, especially because they're the mainstreams and, and what we could talk about what this really boils down to because of the pandemic. But the mainstream really wants to push that you don't know anything, not you, all of us don't know anything. And that you have to listen to a doctor who pushes a narrative. And that narrative is the truth. And if you don't believe in that narrative, you're either a bigot, a racist or homophobic or or or. Uh, mm. uh, the anti-vax or any of these things that they want to label you at. And once they put that label on you, it's very difficult to defend yourself because any any type of defense in that almost makes you look like, you know, why are you defending something that isn't even true, in other words, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, That's this exactly is all down to, to, the, to, the, to the, for example, the vaccine, okay? Um, and there was some videos about this that came out recently about Fauci going to the uh, bad part, well, let's say bad parts, but the low income parts of, of Washington, D.C. and tr promoting, actually wanting to pay African-American people to take the vaccine. They were incentivizing it. They're like, we'll pay you to take it. And then one gentleman said that, you know, that really raises suspicion that you would pay us to take this. Now I think that there's a motive. And he, he, he literally went off and the whole thing was captured on, on video and it, it's been released on everybody's channel from Russell Brand to, to everyone else's. But, uh, you know, I mean, this is basically what we're dealing with right now. You know, um, they want to create. Yeah. Things. Oh, yeah. Another another. I've been censored for so many different things over over since I started doing this. But uh, just for speaking, this is funny. All all I'm all I do is I just turn the camera on and I just talk. Right. And then and, and they and they say, oh, this is too dangerous. We need to protect people from this information. Wow, that they're putting a lot of power in my hands. Like to me, if I'm the mainstream, I would think, why are you hiding information? Why are you deleting content that I want to see? Shouldn't me as the consumer be deciding what I want to see? Why is the government ultimately the the government people control it. why are they deciding what i can and can't see i mean it's people think of it on a people think of it like oh we're doing it to protect the children or protect this person this person but 
and I, I don't understand. I don't know the the uh, philosophical way to analyze this, but uh, like there's a name for it. But something about the best way that society should function is you think like, okay, what's best for yourself, and then if each person thinks, okay, what's best for themselves, and then as a whole community, what's best for the community. But instead, people are always thinking in this woke society and uh, with this the the programming. Like, oh, we have to do this to protect someone else. But nobody's asking for protection. That's the weird thing. Like, who yeah. are we protecting from information about how I uh, do bloodletting to protect my health? And people aren't allowed to understand that. So I, I started also talking a lot about um, when the pandemic happened. I mm -hmm. was talking about the pandemic. I went into ultra deep research mode very early on about it. And I, wow, I mean, I knew more than anybody who was talking online about it, that's for sure. And I uh, was hesitant because I knew the high level of censorship. I learned very quickly early on and censorship started very early, much earlier than people realize. And, and that's, that's why they were, that's why they're able to continue the lies for so long because they got rid of like the whole first wave of facts that came out wiped off the internet and anybody who said it wiped out. So, uh, yeah, they got ahead of it and, and I, um, tried to communicate things in, in a way that I thought absolutely does not violate any of the terms and conditions. I was very careful. And yet it got deleted just because it, my facts, not, not even, not my advice, not telling anybody to do anything, just the facts I'm saying, um, they felt were dangerous for people to know the facts. Some so, of the things that both of us were talking about was building your immune system simply by the yeah. things that we believe in, practicing health, nutrition, eating well, getting you rest. You couldn't even talk about vitamin D. You couldn't talk about you vitamin, talk about D, vitamin D, D without getting shadow banned. <laughs> yeah. Even, even uh, Dr. Mikovits, who was on London Real and Patrick Bet David, those videos were also censored from the very beginning where they were trying to you know, talk about the truth behind all this. And you know, it, now, as we've come, kind of come almost full circle with some of the information. It, the studies have actually shown that people who got vaccinated were more susceptible to COVID than people who didn't, okay? And the people who, who didn't, who were younger males, healthy males without prior pre-existing conditions, and that exercise, uh, you know, got exposed to sunlight, you know, fresh air, breathing, eating good, and so forth, instead of fast food, which was always open, um, they ended up having a higher chance of not even getting it. Guys like, you know, well, you, you ended up getting it, correct? Yeah, so so I was talking to a nurse the other day here at the, yeah, I was talking to a nurse anyways from America here visiting on vacation. And I asked him, like, what's the real deal at, at your hospital, like, as far as who's dying and all that? And he said, um, the people that are supposed to be the most protected are actually dying at a much greater rate and having much more severe symptoms so there's something in it that makes you more not less susceptible mm -hmm. and fast forward to that that channel got taken down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so now um now we're at a stage right now where a lot of people want to know what is the future of tony huge what is the future of tony huge on social media and on uh, platforms like YouTube, and I'm going to give you a chance to say this, and then we'll we'll discuss what the, we've already talked about this, but we'll discuss it later. Where are you? Where are you going to put your direction now that YouTube has censored you so many times? Hmm. So there's Enhanced Matrix HQ, which is like a, a membership biohacking site that I write a lot of articles for. So yeah, I try to write an article. You know, like uh, almost every day there, and then, and I I may do YouTube, but I may just uh, keep it very like vanilla. The the most interesting, most educational, most entertaining things have to be on another platform. 
Mm -hmm. So those will be on another platform. We, and there you, already is a lot there. Already. You can make, we're not going to put it in the description, so it's not going to violate any of the policies of this channel, but I have a Rumble channel. I haven't active, I haven't used it yet, but I have a, so it's a Guru Mean Alive Rumble, uh, and I'll be making videos on there shortly. And you'll, you, go ahead, feel free to talk. Yeah, so that, that's where I'll be as well. And um, it's, it's not going to get a lot of traffic there, which is the problem. So I don't want to invest a lot into some really crazy videos. But if the traffic increases, I'll invest a lot more into it. And uh, a lot of my uncensored videos are already there. So a lot of the videos that got deleted, a lot of the videos that people are looking everywhere for are there. And I think there's some videos that are on there that have never been published anywhere else as well. So it's a good reason to go there, but I just think that people are really lazy. They just stick to the same platform, even though it, even if it's censored, even if it's just packed full of misinformation, they still just out of convenience use it. Um, well, I'm hoping our community, the, 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 the people that really, you know, seek the information that we provide will understand that if they want factual information that's not being censored they're going to have to watch these videos on rumble and you and i will be doing videos on my youtube channel which will also be telling people to go check out the video on rumble which a lot of people do it's not it's not uh abnormal. yeah it's, it's like you can it's, it's like if you record a 30 minute video and 15 minutes of it is you know something that would get censored and 15 minutes isn't you can take the part that is you know, matrix safe, you know, PG 13. I don't even know what to call it. Um, like, it's not like a PG thing. It's like, say, main, matrix safe, main, mainstream safe. Yeah, put that on the main platform, the bigger platform. And the agenda then, safe. How about that? What do you, what? The agenda safe videos. Agenda safe videos. Yeah. yeah. So put the agenda yeah. safe videos on YouTube and then say for the full uncut version, you can follow us on Rumble. Yeah, and look, both platforms get both platforms get content. Then sure. everybody's happy. Both we platforms are happy. The content producers happy. The audience is happy because they get to see it. So really, it comes down to the audience. Though the audience needs to be less lazy and and start looking on other platforms. But it, but I understand everybody does things out of habit. And, you know, it's not really a mindful thing. You want to sit down and watch a video. You just open what you're used to opening. So it's going to take more influencers getting on an un uncensored platform. It'll just take more. It'll just take a little more time and more people. But um, Chris Bell messaged me and Chris and Mark Bell are going to be publishing uncensored content on Rumble also. And he was saying, hey, if all of us influencers who want to talk open, honestly go go over there and put the uncensored stuff then the smartest most important people of the audience we're trying to reach mm -hmm. are going to come over there maybe it gets less views but it's going to be the most intelligent people the most interested people the most uh you know constructive people and that's the audience that you know we want anyways in the hardcore biohacking space i'm going to urge everybody right now as soon as this video is over download rumble on your computer or on your phone. It's so simple. Just download Rumble, and then when you want to look at videos, you can look for me, Guru Amin Alai, Rumble, or is it Tony Huge at Rumble? I think just search Tony Huge, and the Tony Huge channel would come up, I think. Would you, right Tony, away. would you be able to put the videos from the very first channel that you had that, that uh, Trevor and I were on? Would you be able to put all those, upload those up to Rumble? Because those are videos that a lot of people would like to see again. I remember asking you how come you couldn't put it again on YouTube, but you said they watermarked them in some sort of way that if they ever came back on YouTube, they'd be taken down. But you could put them all on Rumble, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. And, and there are a lot of old videos on there, too. So you actually search Tony Yoon uh tony huge i mean and then maybe you'll see maybe some of our collaborations from before maybe already on there but if not then yeah oh it just takes more time and money to invest in doing it so uh, like i said about is there's enough videos up there to go there for sure there's no one's going to be disappointed if they look up tony huge on rumble they'll find lots of good stuff but to me to, to like dig up the really old videos 
and also to make some really nice new ones i, I want to see a little bit more traffic but mm -hmm. again i think with there's other influencers that i was talking to also moving to rumble so with those ones plus chris and mark bell plus you plus me now you have a lot of the uncensored people who want to be uncensored who who want to be able to speak differently than the than the agenda then can be there and, and I'll be track. making videos. I'll be making videos about famous gear cycles of people that I've helped, uh, optimal ways of doing insulin and growth hormones to get the best gains without creating too much IGF one to get organ growth, and a lot of other videos that you guys might like. If you want a particular video of me or Tony, please say something in the comments of this video so that we could address that for you. Now, Tony, one of the things I wanted to talk about because it's on everybody's mind um, is you know. I'm going to say our friend because I, I I don't wish bad on anybody regardless of how they act. Okay, and and uh, Leo was my friend, and I introduced him to the bodybuilding world first on my channel, and then on uh, RX Muscle. And I would say this: I really do believe that Leo was my friend. And um, just for everybody to know, um, the reason that Leo and I had a falling out, a lot of it was a misunderstanding. He didn't understand that I was grieving and mourning and dealing with my stepson dying. He thought that because I canceled the second trip to Florida, it was out of hate for him or something like that. I still arranged for everyone, Lenny and Roger, to do videos with him to help his channel and help him get a big boost. I just wasn't feeling it. It wasn't at a time where I could just put on a fake face and, and where I was really sad. And I could just put on a fake face and make videos. I wasn't able to split my, my mind like that. I'm, I am a very... A sympathetic person. I have a lot of them. I am a very emotional person and and dealing with the boy that I raised since he was one years old. It was very, very difficult for me to watch him suffer and die the way he did. He was a long drawn out death. He was in the hospital several times that he, they thought he was going to die. One of those times was on the second trip to Florida. Later on, uh, and that didn't really cause the big rift, but later on, Leo had asked me to do his channel. And this is when I was actually mourning my stepson. He had already passed and it was in the height of COVID. And uh, I wasn't, I didn't want to do his channel. And so instead of doing his channel, he ended up trashing me in a lot of videos, saying things that simply were not true. There was no basis to what he said whatsoever. That you, people want to know that the things that he said, if you remember, um, they were just attacks to attack my character. Everybody who knows me knows that no one's ever said anything bad about me. Leo was the first, and he realized that if he can attack my my character and my morality, then people would, you know, maybe not like me. And it was a kind of a smear campaign where he would say I was a liar and a thief and all these other things that no one else had ever said because it wasn't true. But that was his way of saying, I'll get even with you because he felt that I no longer liked him as a friend. And when Leo really likes you, if he becomes your friend, if you, if he feels that you're not his friend anymore, he takes it very personally. He took it very personally, and it was it was so personal to him that he he could not stand the fact that uh, that I had other friends that still liked me. So he tried to get every one of my friends to no longer like me. He called Roger, told him to stop talking to me. Lenny, Tony, he called everyone to stop talking to me, and they're my real friends. So of course they're not going to talk to me because they know that the things he was saying wasn't true. Anyway. I never really told Tony, and I don't do this to say, you know, don't talk to someone because they did this to me. I simply let them, you know, they, everyone has the right to be treated by a person their own way. And I would, you know, I was hoping that maybe Tony and, and Leo would make great content together. And it seems that they did. Tony, um, in the beginning, when before Leo came out to Thailand, I know he was suffering from a, a severe alcoholism um, and from my understanding, you actually saved him from uh, a demise of alcohol. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that's that's how it happened. I mean, he he was at the lowest point of his life, you know. Like, uh, and I was friends with both you guys. I, I, you know, obviously longer friends with you and um, spent a lot more time with you. But um, yeah, I was friends with Leo and I was friends with you and. Um, you know, at, at at the time, I knew that it might upset you a little bit, but I also made the promise to myself that if I'm going to spend time with Leo, I'm going to 
fix your relationship together. And uh, I did make a lot of progress. Like, there's a lot of things with Leo I couldn't, like, say... I couldn't, like, comment him directly. Besides me not being, con uh, you know, I'm not liking conflict just because I just don't need to fight with anybody. Like, if someone wants to do what they want to do, then, okay, just do what you want to do. I don't... I'll either, jo I'll either join you or I'll not, but I don't need to, like, try to control anybody, right? So that's why I'm not... I don't conflict with anything because I just like, okay, if you want to do that, then do that. I'll, I'll just leave, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, now I forgot what I was saying. I'm having so many flashbacks of all this interesting stuff. It's been one heck of a, one heck of an interesting chapter. I remember I was going to come to Thailand. But, but, but I, I had him close. I had him close right. to like, I mean, he, okay. First of all, you know, at any moment, if you said what he wanted you to say, then he would forgive you immediately. Yes. Uh, you just didn't want to say, I don't, yeah, I don't blame you. Well, anyways, the, there, there, there was probably another way around it to fix it. Something, something similar, but not so extreme. And then... It, I had I had it almost fixed because I was totally changing the way that I mean I mean that that, that Leo thinks right. like Leo is such an aggressive person because he has like very strong belief, beliefs yes. about something when he gets it yes when he, you know when he when he decides on something it's like it's not even stubborn's not the right word for it he's like a warrior it's a yes. genetic thing. very much so yes like his ancestors must have been actual battlefield warriors fighting to the death every day and his epigenetics re reflect that he's a fighter yeah and uh, you know but he's also like the type of fighter that would go into a battle and fight for freedom to the death he would he would know, defend like, his friends to the to the fullest uh, and and that was one yeah. thing i could say about him that as much as he would be angry but if if he liked you and you're his friend he would fight anyone for you so that's again like i said it, you know leo was my friend and I did like him a lot. It, he misunderstood things when I didn't want to do the video with him. He thought I betrayed his friendship and turned his friendship down when that wasn't the case. But once it had happened, he made up his mind and that was it. Forget Amin, bad things about him. Uh, if, if he doesn't apologize or say that my narrative is true, then I never want to speak to him and I'm going to say negative things about him. And unfortunately, that's just the way he is. Um, but uh, like I said, he's also, when he was your friend, he was a very, very good friend. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had I had that almost fixed. I had the way he changed, you know, thought about it, changed and all that. He, uh, he, you know, he got, he got a little bit aggressive there at the end again. Well, okay, he's always got an aggressive side and a loving side and all that. It's kind of tamed at times, but then when it, something happens, it's like throwing gas on a fire, it just explodes, right? Yeah, so so when he started um, publishing content again, he he got a little bit more aggressive again, and I have to think about why. But he, you know, he, uh, it's he put pressure on himself, you know, like well, he, I think he didn't need to put pressure like that on himself, but he put pressure on himself, and he couldn't really handle the pressure he puts on himself. Right, he, he expects too much of himself. Like you yes. could, I mean, because if you want to be a champion. You know, you sacrifice everything else to, to for that one goal, and that's how that's how he was. So he wanted to be the best YouTuber. So he put some instead of just starting. So he put so much pressure on him that he kind of went back to his aggr more aggressive type approach. And uh, yeah, I understood. I, I at the time I did understand that that's what it was, and I thought, okay, he'll be more aggressive, and then he'll. Um, We'll talk about it and I'll come back to it and explain to him again that we don't need to be like combative with other people, you know, like we don't need to start any more fights. It was a way of making views because I remember in the, in the very beginning when you when he was on my channel, you, you said some things about Fouad Abiyad that I didn't know Fouad, but I just didn't like the whole bashing negative tone. But in all honesty, unfortunately, due to the nature of human beings, especially right now, when you say something bad about someone and you put it in the thumbnail, more people will look at it than if you say something good. Like if you say, 
Amin saved a cat from a tree. That's not going to get any views. But if you say um, Amin killed a hooker or something like that, boom, that's going to get a lot of views. So it's it's unfortunate that we live in a society these days where negativity seems to be promoted more than positivity. But he knew that and he knew the ways to get views. Uh, one of the things he took advantage of was my arrest. Um, and, um, you know, he kind of used that as a way to say, look at all the things I said before were true about this guy. Um, you know, you want to say anything about that, Tony? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, your, your case is, is highly unfortunate because, I mean, you, you shouldn't talk too much about it, but I, I can just say a couple things like this is a classic case of you are trying to help people and it gets turned on you. So it is exactly like the matrix striking back because you're doing something, you're teaching something that the matrix doesn't want people to know. It's very dangerous to the matrix. I mean, the matrix is, you know, whatever government, it's a lot of different things combined into combined into one sure. idea. So you, you yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time. If you're doing something against the matrix and an opportunity comes up, like what happens with me is every every month, practically. I mean, nothing, not, not as severe as what's happening to you, but some smaller thing seems to happen to me every month or now every week or every day even uh, where the matrix kind of strikes back. Uh, like, yeah, the harassment, so. like the harassment you're receiving. We could talk about that. Um, yeah. Recently, you, you had said in a video that um, you were going to be in Bangkok. And I, I know that it was due to the harassment you were getting in uh, Pattaya. But uh, why don't you elaborate that on a little bit so people understand exactly what this harassment is and why you decided to, to spend more time in Bangkok for the time being? Well, actually, I, I've been spending more time in Hua Hin, which is uh, it's like Pattaya, but it's a lot more peaceful. And that could be good if, if you want more peace and chill, or, you know, part of me misses some of the crazy party life of Pattaya, but, but Hua Hin still has some party to it. I mean, Connor and I are making some really funny videos in Hua Hin. We're going to post on his channel soon. So you can kind of see like these videos that we're filming here are, uh, you know, they, they show some good party stuff. It's good stuff. So yeah, it's it's enough stuff. It's not Pattaya. Pattaya is my favorite place, but well, what has got what, Pattaya's what, got a lot of crazy people, and like I'm, I think anybody who's famous needs to be careful. Yeah, okay. If you're on vacation for a week or two, you're good, no problem. I I was warned this. I was warned this long before I I got there. They said, do not live there unless you're a certain type of person, but visit there and just make sure that everybody there knows that you're not a full-time resident there. And that will keep you out of most of the trouble. My problem is being full-time there and then this, that, this whole thing that happened recently coming up and, um, you know, some incentive out there for people to figure out, you know, more about me. Uh, I've got a lot of stalkers. I've got people following me everywhere in Pattaya. So like, uh, man, I, I, I've just, I've just gone back to Pattaya a couple times recently. And each time there's someone waiting for me there, writing that, you know, it's, it's following me, whatever it's, uh, it's a weird feeling because on the one hand I can defend myself. I'm not worried about someone following me around. Um, if they don't, they don't confront you. They're just, they're just taking right. notes and stuff. Right. That's what you said. Right. Right. Hmm. So I'm not afraid of these people, of course, but it's a weird thing when you have no privacy, like I'm thinking, okay, and now I'm going to like, go in here and get, you know, a massage. And I'm thinking, God, is like someone going to come in like, while I'm trying to relax getting a massage or are they going to note like which massage girls I see? Am I bringing liability to 
all of my all the girls that I see because I see a lot of you know I have a lot of friends like am I going to bring liability to all my friends so then I'm like man I, I have friends that are uh you know that that value their privacy a lot too and like am I going to bring this drama into their life if I mm -hmm. So, so it's like everything you do during the day when you realize you have zero privacy anymore. Uh, I, I guess it's like, it's like if you're Brad Pitt and you know, that there's a lot of good things to it. You're going to get a lot of free stuff and you know, lots of people are going to like you and every girl's going to want to be with you. Right. So that's the best parts of being famous or being, in 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 the comparing to a, the top high in celebrity, they will have paparazzi following them. Right. So they will have no privacy. They have to worry about anything they do is going to be caught in a picture. So it, it's the same sort of feeling as that, which which makes me just think, wow, maybe like maybe I should be more isolated. Like I don't need to be a public person, really. I. I, oh, I did become a public person. As a lawyer, I was very well known and I marketed myself very well. And I had a huge amount of clients, uh, which just reminds me, I had a client contact me recently that I have to, um, I have to check something for them. Gosh, I gotta remember. It's like, it's really, it's bedtime in, in here. So my brain, you know, is working at half or 30% capacity probably. Um, Let me but, ask you something. Um, when when you you've done nothing wrong, I, I I remember at the very very beginning when this incident happened, and and, and as everybody knows, I just want to say, God bless Leo, rest in peace. You know, um, he did have an anger problem, but inside he was a good human being. I don't care about what he said about me, and I hope none of you guys do. I actually did like him, regardless. That's why I never did any hate videos against him because I'm not like that. Period. But besides that. I knew his heart, I knew he was a good person, and I think a lot of people misunderstand things. But regardless of that, um, you didn't do anything wrong. I mean, you know, you were in, you were in talk, you were, you went to the station, they would talk to you, and right, it just seems right. like things are kind of just dragging on because there's well, this unknown factor. That's the weird thing is it's, it's, I don't know why they make it sound like it's still going. I mean, well, okay, I won't get into the details too much because the problem is I, I, I actually am extremely honest and then people don't believe me because I'm so honest they've never experienced it before. That's yes, you're very honest, that's true. Yeah, but, you know, there's, there's uh, a, little, a little following of trolls that believe that I did something wrong. And There's some people that think I had something to do with this just because he was so uh, angry. Oh, yeah, you're you're a suspect. Connor Murphy's a suspect. He showed up at the same. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I could be. But anyways, it's not. It's nothing like that. So, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Tony's getting a massage right now while we're doing it. So she's the hands behind his neck. It's, yeah. It seems a little strange, but there's somebody behind him, behind the scenes, giving him a massage while we do this. Yeah. You're about to go to this bed is, on wine. This is massage bedtime right now, but the time difference, because of the time difference, opposite time, it's hard to find times that work for both of us. So right. just overlapping. Uh, I was saying the about, oh yeah, I didn't do a thing. You know, and, and the problem is like the, the small amount of information, I was honest about this in all the videos I did. You were. The small, yeah. the small amount of information that I'm withholding is literally just for the family's sake. Like I said everything I could as much as possible with some read between the lines things that, so that I can be as respectful as possible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even then I had a lot of feedback from other people that knew him that said, Oh, I should not have said so much. And I'm like, well, I don't know how much am I supposed to say, please. Like how, look, can we, how about this? Could everybody just decide how much they want me to say? And mm -hmm. then I will just say it because some people don't want me to say more because they think it violates his privacy and the family's privacy. And then some people want me to say more. But the funny thing is the family doesn't want me to say more. Right. His friends don't want me to say more. The only people that want me to say more is his trolls. Yes. Like they use the it against you. They use everything that against that you. They were obsessed with him and the people who stalked him right. are the ones that want more. Why do they want more information? Who? 
to, to, to obsess more about him. Like he was trying to get away from these stalker type people. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones acting like they're like justice for him. His family, me, the people that were really there for him a hundred percent, like we're all on the same page. And then you have these trolls that know nothing about him that are causing problems for everybody. And they want me to give more information that the family wouldn't want me to give. So it's like, what am I, who, who, who am I supposed to respect here? Am I supposed to respect well, the family I, yeah. and his child? Or am I supposed to respect the trolls and yeah. like, just keep talking like I did because I think I made a huge mistake. I think I said way too much. Now I realize I thought by saying more uh, and remember my, my editors filtered out a lot as well. Well, we spoke. I said, yeah, I, I said even more. I said a lot more than I said. I mean, I recorded like three hours of me explaining everything and then they yeah. cut out like an hour. Or so you see like there was two hours published or something like this. Yeah, you told me everything on the phone, but it, it didn't come out in the video. And I think both of us could say, you know, God bless Lucy and his daughter. Uh, Lucy was an amazing person. I, I really, I really think the world of her and I hope she sees this and I hope she knows. I really did want to go to his funeral. I really wanted to pay my respects to Lucy and, and his daughter. I really wanted to pay my respects to his family. And he was, he was buried in Boulder here, God rest his soul. And uh, it's not very far from where I live. Um, when I first met them, they came here and he took Lucy to go see where he grew up in Boulder. And part of the trip was that they visited me. And it was nothing. It was just a fantastic meeting. I thought they were both incredible people. Um, Lucy is is just beautiful, and she's very intelligent. And uh, I was very happy for him when he had a daughter. And um, you know, it's just sad that um, that he's not going to be able to be in in her life right now. And uh, I can't even imagine what Lucy's going through. But uh, God bless you, Lucy, and I hope. Um, if you ever need anything from me, you have my number, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to to help you in any way I possibly can, because I, I really think you're an amazing person. And, uh, you know, she did so much. She did so much for me, too. She helped edit every video, and she she she's just she's just a really loving, kind person. You really, when you meet her, you you met her, right? Did Didn't you meet, meet her? her? Just, just, um, just talking. A little just, bit, not very much, very little. Just, just a beautiful heart, beautiful, kind soul. Yeah. And, uh, she's, um, without a doubt, she's going to be an amazing mother. Well, I, I don't, you know, I'm here if she needs me, but I don't want to, I don't know. It was, you know, there, there was, there was a lot of things going on at the time. And I, I just, I feel like, I feel like I would just bring more drama to stuff. Drama just follows me. And I, you don't know. And that's the thing. I'm There's, not to make drama, you know? Talking about things that you really don't know about and speculating is kind of what caused the, the, the all these people to start talking. Because the fact, if anybody really knew, then this, this issue would be at rest. But, but nobody really knows what happened. I mean, we can all speculate. I've speculated, too. We can all speculate, but the truth is, I don't think anyone really knows, and it's it's unfortunate that uh, that this is still being uh, something that's affecting your life, and you're you've done nothing wrong, and you 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 seem like you have to tiptoe around even going back to your house and with Taya and and all you know and living the life that you normally have. It's it's really kind of put a toll on on you, and it's it's unfortunate, you know. I'm sure you've been hurting. He was a good friend of yours. And I'm sure you're very sad that this whole thing happened. It's it's very unfortunate that we don't have more answers. I wish I wish there were more answers. But everybody who's made a video, even John Bravo, it's all speculation. There, no one really knows what happened. If they did, well, there's a there's a lot of really wrong information that a lot of assumptions are made out. I mean, this is a good lesson in like telephone, where one person says or does one thing, and then some another person says it and it changes and, and by the time it gets to where it is now like the facts are unrecognizable yeah it's it's very unfortunate it's very sad uh, listen tony's not on the run okay for response and nick tragilli's video well, I I mean, yeah so i'm not on the run from any authorities that's for sure yeah. i'm totally cooperative 
Um, and you're free to travel if you want. There's no there's no restrictions yeah, on you. Yeah, I'm free to yeah. travel. So you're not I, like hiding anywhere. You just don't want to be harassed. But at the same time, yeah. But at the same time, I, I, it's like, it's like the benefits of being famous have to outweigh the drawbacks. And there's a lot of benefits to being famous, but there's a lot of drawbacks too. And so when the, the when the benefits drop way down and the, the liabilities of being famous goes way up, and the amount of fame, like. Like, because it's good to be famous and you can turn it on and turn it off. But then when you go out in public and you got people following around and spying on you all the time in every possible way, it's like at a certain point, you just, then you're just like, okay, can I just have some privacy? Like, I don't even need a lot of privacy. I can have a video camera following me around at all times. As long as I know the videographer is a friendly person. The problem is I have stalkers that are, I don't know if they're friendly people or not. Like I have strangers that are too interested in me. So that's the problem. If once this is all over, then I can go back to just having a videographer follow me around all the time. And I, I don't what know. What do you think is going to end this, Tony? I mean, what do you, what, what, what do you, I mean, obviously there being a definitive reason for what happened, that would be a great way to end it. But what do you think is going to end it? Because it doesn't seem like there's going to be answers. It just, you have nothing to say. You, you've already said, you've already cooperated. You've done everything you can. I don't know anything. I was over here. So anyone that thinks that I have the ability to, to, to make something like that happen, you're delusional. Um, but uh, in, in despite anything he said negative about me, I mean, that's just kind of crazy talk. But what really would, what do you think is going to put this to rest so that, you know, you can go about your life again in a normal way? Hmm. Well... I guess it's just time or yeah, I guess it's just time. And it's kind of like as time goes on, the interest in things decreases, of course, because there's more interesting, more educational, more relevant things that happen in the meantime. Do uh, you think they're ever going to solve this? I mean, it's kind of a, a, a mystery right now. I don't want to use the M word, the other M word, but it is a mystery right now as to what happened. There's really no, nobody really knows whether it was caused by anyone else or if it was caused by himself or I mean, just the whole thing is really, it's really strange, you know? I mean, we have to say that of all the things that have happened, obviously what happened to me is also kind of insane too. It's funny how both that happened to him and this has happened to me. It's all kind of within the same few months. It's really bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, you know, when I when I made the previous videos, I was making it, I was doing the best I could at that time while protecting some level of family privacy type thing. And then uh, I think afterwards, I think about it more and more. And, and I actually was able to, you know, I, I wasn't, I couldn't go in the room for a while. So yeah, I was sure. making the videos before re-entering the room. So when I finally could enter the room and take a closer look at everything, I was then I I learned more. So there are there were updates that I wanted to give, but there was so much negativity when when his trolls because see Leo was Leo was probably one of the most hated people in the in our community, mm -hmm. but he also had like some fans that really loved him, and then he had like some weirdo fans that like loved hated him. You know, they're just obsessed with them, which I think any celebrity has, right? So. I mean, a lot uh, of people don't even. I think the, these, these people came over, the crazy ones came over mm -hmm. and came on me. Mm -hmm. So the problem was I want to like educate people and I want to give all the facts and I want uh, people to understand because I was getting advice from many different people about what to do. And the best advice I got was that, or I thought at the time was the best advice that, you know, you have to respect the family, but he's also a public figure. And like, there's a lot of people out there who really loved him. And yeah, a lot of people that hated him as well, but still there's, you know, there's a lot, you know, 150,000 subscribers or something like that. So there's, there's a lot that loved him and they like deserve to know 
they're so curious. They want to know this is someone meaningful to them. They, um, like, let's put it this way. Like family, the family is the most important thing, right? right. But fans count for something because these are like the people that supported you, the people that believed in you, all this. So like, I was, I was trying to get him to be more transparent on videos. And we had recorded a podcast the week before that was a side of him. Well, it was the real him. It's the first time that the real him ever came on. Really well, the came on. Leo that I met, the guy that was really cool, the guy that was just a, yeah. a nice, easygoing, loving guy. Yeah, that's yeah. the real him. And that's what I'll always remember. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna think about the bad things he did because he was a really good friend of mine. And I really I honestly I wish we would have mended things up. I really do. And I'm sad that we didn't. Well the the what Leo was on video and what the public thinks Leo is 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 just a character. Um the real Leo actually much better than the character. By far. But he create he created the character to be what could grow the biggest on YouTube and, and, and it's very well calculated. And his trajectory was absolutely amazing from, from his introduction on Rx or on my channel and then Rx Muscle to his rise to fame. And I think that the very first video that he did about, about me literally tripled his views. And then from then on, it just was just, he just catapulted into YouTube fame. And uh, you know, I'm very proud he, of him. He had he had the potential to be really massive, but I don't think he could have gotten like let's put it this. I think he could have gotten to like probably he would have capped at five hundred thousand subscribers someday, and he probably would have stayed there, which is amazing, which is huge. I, I don't and, think he would have surpassed Derek, but I think it was good that he did the bio. Well, Derek's like one point three million or something, right? So yeah. yeah. Not even close. But I think if the real Leo that wasn't in character, like he really opened up more genuinely, I think he could have been a multi-million subscriber. I agree. And, th and that's kind of why I, I, I told him, I'm like, Leo, why why are you talking about but that? but he had but he had some very serious limiting factors in himself. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. So I saw I, I saw this and I saw the potential and I thought with just a little bit of work, sure. uh, he, his reputation could be rehabilitated, his channel could be rehabilitated. But you can't control and, it. And since he hit rock bottom, he could take the opportunity to rebuild uh, with a new um, like persona or style. Yeah. Like it was an opportunity. It's like in the end, I felt like it was fate because like he would have eventually hit a dead end with his previous approach to things. Well, I'm, and also the fact that he's uh, being combative because when you're combative, when you're, when you're a YouTuber and you're combative like that, like there's a certain threshold. If you cross it, you will get canceled. You will get attacked. You will, you'll lose favor. So like you have to be careful um, because like even the trolls they're with, like there's, there's, there's this very small amount of very, bad troll people but most of the trolls are kind of like there's a certain threshold that when it gets there they're like oh this doesn't feel good anymore this starts yeah. feeling like a bad thing yeah. so yeah anyways i t yeah there was so much to it see i, I actually really love talking about this because you, tony do you think that we were I building mean, we were building something amazing yeah it, it, and, and it did involve it did involve reconnecting uh, Leo, recon I mean, yeah, Leo, reconnecting with you, but it just didn't, you. It didn't happen. And Listen, so, you, know, I, I, you know, I love you like like a brother, man. We 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 just clicked from the the minute we met. I never was upset, so you know, I was never upset that you. I was actually hoping for the best. I was hoping that because I know the real him. You know, like like you you know the real him too. Not a lot of people do. And I think that the one of the limiting factors, and and you you can either confirm or, or say I'm wrong, but. This, the anger he had, he had, he had some some kind of uncontrollable anger that I don't. He couldn't control it, and when it came out, you know, it, it seemed like for him, hours later, or the next day, or even sometimes minutes later, it was it was a flash, and it was gone. Like he was just back to normal. But to the people that he portrayed that to, it hurt them. It, he did that to me a couple of times, and it hurt me. And I don't know if he well, really. Half, 
He said ha part of it's genetic, part of it's based on uh, a value system that he learned, and part of it's based on the champion mentality of mm -hmm. like, unless you support his uh, exact mission, then you're an enemy, you know? Yes. So th those are the three elements that played into it. You know, that's you, they said that very accurately. That's that's exactly. Well, I I, I, I think I know Leo better than anybody. Um, I, I would say Lucy knows him better because um, she knows him intimately and she knows him for longer and obviously more. But like um, there's certain things like men can only understand men like a woman can't understand certain parts of a man's psychology mm -hmm. and like man to man. I understood. I really understood him like really understood him and he he also really understood me like i mean i i i have to say because he put the energy in and he was so focused um in some ways he understood me better than anybody had before you know because because he's smart and he put the time in and we spent 24 hours a day together so yeah um, i think it's i think it's unfortunate that people aren't taking into consideration that you're also mourning the loss of a very close friend and well I, I can't really mourn about it unless like right now i'm starting to feel it but i can't really mourn about it when i'm sort of in a like i need i need space to just think and meditate on it that i don't i haven't really had time for that once all the drama's over i will but what's also frustrating about all the drama is like my plan was to be fully open and honest about everything with it as much as I think privacy etiquette uh, allows and then move past that onto there's a lot of stuff that Leo and I were working on that Leo would have presented, you know, on a daily basis through his videos, but you can't, but I can, but I'm not going to do it. And if, if it's, if it's going to be met with negativity, like I'm, I'm, I don't need to make videos. I could go do business or something. There's plenty of things I can do. I don't, I just, you know, I live in cheap Thailand. It costs like nothing to live here. I can, I can live for nothing in Thailand. You know, I don't need to go out and make a ton of money. You had me sold. I was on the way. I just had the family issues that I wasn't going to be able to leave my son and, and his mom wasn't willing to, to, to do that for several months. But and then also you told me I had to stay quarantined for two weeks at that time that I was going that I was going to come out and see you. Yeah, you know, that, was, that was a bit of a bummer. You didn't make it where you could, but yeah. Uh, you so, know, God really so, Tony, when all this is over, I'll 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 come out and see you. I I I do I do want to think positively. I know I didn't do anything wrong. I, I know that the truth is going to come out in my trial. And, uh, you know, for everybody that does support me like you and knows that my freedom is in jeopardy right now. And, and I am yeah. not I'm not a guilty person. I'm an innocent person. All I did was try to help. And unfortunately, you know, people do pass away and sometimes people pass away in your home. And because that doesn't mean that there is an ex ex external factor that I had an influence on his passing. I didn't. Um, you know, he was only at my house three hours. A lot of people don't even know that. So it's really sad. He was a very good person. And I, and, you know, I wish, I wish nothing but uh, sincerity uh, to his family, uh, who I, who I got to meet. They're, they're very loving, caring people. And I, I do hope that when this thing surfaces, that they'll, that they will understand that um, there are a lot of lies being told to them for them to, to believe what they, what they think. Um, and, and the truth will come out in the trial. Yeah. You know, I, when I met him, I got the feeling you guys are like best friends and he was a great. I can't imagine you would ever do anything to hurt him. Only to yeah. help him no. possible. Okay, so. you, it, Tony, you know me. I, it, when I started that whole thing, it was a way for me to deal with Caden. It was a way for me to deal with the morning. And all I wanted to do was say, you know what, I've got to give back and help people in a positive way. And I, I, I you know, that's all I ever did. That's we talked about helping Trevor and, and, and Chris Bell and, and all these positive things came out of it. It's just unfortunate that uh, sometimes people have health issues that they don't explain. And um, 
when they're not honest about certain things, they put themselves in a bad situation. And that's just unfortunate, you know? Yeah. And it, like I said, I've, I've nothing but uh, the utmost love and respect for his family. And I do hope that uh, when I do end up seeing them in trial, that they do understand that I have nothing but love for them and I had nothing but love for them. Yeah, so your freedom will come when you are able to work through that. And uh, yeah, that's right, you've got the, um, the donation site too. So I'll post that again on my Instagram sometime. And we'll put that at the end of this channel too, people. I, I was released on my own signature. I do not have an ankle monitor. I can travel with 30 days notice. So for all the people that think that's uh, negatively about me, I think that should weigh in people's minds of, of to just how, how much of I have proven to the court that I'm not a flight risk, that I plan on defending myself because I am innocent. And, um, you know, like I said, the truth will come out in the trial. And I'm looking forward to that day. And I'm looking forward to afterward coming and seeing you, Tony. And hopefully we can, you know, bring things back to what they were in the beginning. We we're pioneers of human evolution. We we're friends of freedom. We believe in freedom. We don't believe in censorship. We believe in telling people the truth. I've always been what you do. I was the Tony Huge before you were the Tony Huge. In a lot of ways, you and I are like Trump and Andrew Tate too. Um, they do target people like us because they are they are afraid that our voice will be heard by the people and then they will not believe the agenda, the narrative that's being pushed on them. And I've always respected you, Tony, for being honest. You've never, ever lied to me once. I've never even, I don't even know if you're actually capable of lying. Even in your situations with the with uh, Vivian and, and, and everything else, you you never lie and you never are confrontational. No matter, I, I was with you in Florida when she started kind of getting on your case a little bit and you were just calm about it. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to leave for a little bit and I'll be back <laughs> and you went to the pool uh, with, the, with someone else who was there, remember? <laughs> and, yeah. uh, well, well, this is, this is the main thing is I, I only, I, I, don't, I don't need to like go in public hardly at all. I don't need to be famous. I don't like for, for what I need, for my needs, I'm happy with a couple of girls giving me a massage, doing my research on the computer and sort of living, you know, experimenting with biohacking stuff. Yeah. That's it, right? So anything beyond that, I literally do it all for other people. So sure. I live like 80% 90% for other people, 10% for myself. Now I'm stretched thin because like there's a lot of people, but um, the point is like when it comes to starting another channel or putting content out or anything that I do, I'm only doing it to help people. And if I feel like people don't want to be helped, then I don't need to help them. So like the problem is the main, the mainstream or the matrix doesn't want me to help people. Okay, so they're going to make it harder. So I have to work harder at it to get information out, which means people need to appreciate it. If they don't appreciate it, then I won't do it. Right. So it's kind of weird because obviously some people appreciate it and some people don't. I would like to just get rid of all the people that don't appreciate it. They don't need to watch it. Like, right. I, wish, I wish on YouTube you could just block all the people who don't want to see your stuff. <laughs> but for some reason, there's this, there's, this, there's so many people out there that watch all my videos and find it offensive and then get mad that it's there. If they're so mad about it, why are they watching it? I did, this is the psychology I don't understand. I don't understand how a troll can be a troll and sit there and watch something that they dislike and talk about something that they dislike. Like, why don't they watch something that they like and talk no. about something that they like? I think how do you live? How do you like dwell and live in a world of things that you hate and like make hate? Like then the problem is like even when you do hateful content, is that you're be, you're creating a, a habit of becoming even more hateful, right. and then you're programming all the cells in your body. Now let's say like you build a YouTube channel based on hate then what's going to happen when you're no longer doing the YouTube channel? You're not going to be able to shut it off. Right. You are now going to be stuck being a hateful person. It takes a lot of work to get out of that. So for me also, like, I just want to be really positive and, mm -hmm. and uh, 
give good education. And, and it's like, okay, if people want the education, then I'll give it to them. If they don't want it, then I don't have to. And I'll, I want to keep it positive. Well, people say I'm too enthusiastic about steroids. Yeah, I love steroids. Am I not allowed to say I love steroids? I have to be like every other influencer out there that says, oh, every other influencer is doing a lot of steroids, acting like they're not doing a lot of steroids. They're just on TRT yeah. talking about how bad steroids are. But they're taking steroids every day, and that's why they look and feel amazing. And yeah. there are safe ways to do it. Like these are the things we're not allowed to talk about. It's, it's insane to me. We started off telling everyone the safe ways to do things. And unfortunately, that channel got taken down. But we're going to continue to do it. And we'll be on Rumble. So people look out for us. Tony, if, if anyone wants to get a hold of you um, and they have trouble reaching you through your normal channels, you guys can contact me if you want to get through to Tony at guruaminalai at gmail.com. Send me, uh, send me a message, and if you can, please help by sending a donation. It's very difficult right now, um, given this on my, on my just being charged and not even being found guilty. I, I cannot get any job. I cannot even rent a place. Um, people don't understand that I'm kind of stuck where I'm at, and I, didn't, I, don't have, I can't even downsize from where I'm at. Um, you know, I had to live off of credit cards, and they're all max, so now I'm in a program to fix that. But um, the reality is, is this is they're they're trying to basically strip me of everything I have. They've already defamed my character by putting out a press release that simply was not true. And then they put this on my record so that anybody I've, I've done every background check. I've done it on myself, too. The only thing that pops up is this. And it will prevent anyone from giving me any sort of employment outside of what I do, which is nutritional and bodybuilding consulting. And if you are interested in bodybuilding consulting, I have not gotten any dumber. I am, if anything, sharper than ever. Please contact me at guruaminali at gmail.com, and I'd be more than happy to give you my services that existed prior to this at a discounted rate because it's, in a way, I want to give back to the people who are giving to me. So if you want to donate, then I'll also provide my services for you. If you do donate, reach out to me by sending me an email. Let me know. and. I'll be more than happy. And it says on the page too, I put some things out there that it's a much lower rate than what I was charging in the past because I need your help. And if you need my help and you couldn't afford it before, now you can, and I'm here for you guys. And Tony, uh, I wanna thank you for this opportunity of giving me the chance to interview you. I appreciate it. You know, a lot of people don't know that uh, they think that because you, interviewed, you were with Leo that you and I aren't friends. We never stop being friends, never, okay? Um, as a matter of fact, he wanted to do a lot of videos with me, but Leo just didn't want it. He said, Tony, I remember he, you told me that he said, if you did videos with me, then he, he didn't want to do videos with you. And I understand because like you said, we, we kind of broke down the personality in a way like you said, if he's not, if you weren't with him, then you were against him. And I was already in the against him type of sphere. I never disliked him. I want everyone to know. I always liked him. Okay. I always hope that someday, because Tony, you told me you were going to work on our relationship, and I was hoping that that would come to fruition. Unfortunately, it, it never did. But um, but I don't harbor any ill feelings. Yeah, I mean, if you, he wanted you to do one thing, and then he was going to, you know, forgive you type thing, and then so it's like it's like I it's like there was a path there, but I, it wasn't a good path, and then um, I, we were, I was trying to make another path. And we would he wanted me to say things that weren't true to back up his narrative. And I just, I, I can't, I can't lie like that. And I, I don't, I'm like you, Tony, you know me. I don't have a bad bone in me. I'm not a liar. I don't. And when someone calls a person who's honest, a liar, it's kind of like the worst thing. And unfortunately my last name is a lie. So, you know, he kind of mocked at that a little bit, which is, you know, a little bit. Yeah, well, whether, whether, yeah, whether it's true or not, like that's, yeah, that's, that's the crazy thing. It's like, if it's not true, what he wants you to say, then what, but I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't even want to get into it about what's true or what's not, but. Well, you've known me and, and the things that you, you never saw those things that, that he was saying from me. Um, and by the no, way, anybody who wants to question my sobriety right now. I didn't, I didn't know if he knew something that I didn't know or something like that because he spent more time with you in person working. So I don't know what you two experience. Um, well, you know, I, there's, there, I didn't want to get into detail about it cause I just didn't, I did, 
didn't want to get in the middle of the negativity between it. I was working on the positivity, so uh, I didn't get into it all. But I, but I knew that was not like the right path. So I knew there was another path. I was just working on it. Yeah. Well, I will look forward to doing some more videos with you, and we'll be promoting your Rumble channel. And I'll be doing some channel, some videos on Rumble too. To help, you know, it's a, it's an uncensored platform. So if you guys want the raw, uncut truth, the stuff that we were saying prior to this, the stuff that did get censored on YouTube, check us out on Rumble. We're both going to be making more content. Tony's going to be uploading content. There you go. Still got it. Still got it. How often are you training, man? Well, Connor makes me train frequently. But if it was, I was just doing once every five days for a while, and then training. Training every day. So I don't make every day, but I make most of the days. But my workouts are still only like fifteen minutes. Are you just doing like a heavy duty style principle? Oh, I'm usually preoccupied in the gym and not. Yeah, so there's like. For me, I, I can get excited about doing like one really good set. Yeah, I guess so. Heavy duty style, like Meg Menser style. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really it's what it is. amazing that you built this physique with hard work, but you're able to maintain it with very little work. And I, I people don't understand that with the proper chemistry, if yeah. you get to the level where you want to be at and you don't atrophy, like you still eat good and you don't just shrink, you're going to maintain that level. Look at the size of your chest is just amazing, man. Yeah, you look great, man. There you go. Nice crab shot. Traps popping out still. <laughs> Are you on anything? I have abs. I have abs. Yep. No. And this is this is pre Mexican food, so the burrito is on its way. Are you Are you uh, Are you on anything right now, Tony? Oh yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm always do. on something, but but pretty low dosages of anything. Of what? I like, mean. Uh, well, mostly I take like. Uh, maybe 300 milligrams of testosterone per week. Me too. Whenever I test my blood levels, it's usually between like 300 and 1200 mm -hmm. of testosterone. So on the lower side, because if my, my average is probably like 600, 500 testosterone, which is probably like a little bit, well, it's probably like natural level. Yeah, it's probably right. natural. So that's then, your TRT. That's basically your TRT right there. Yeah, and 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 then on top of that, I'll take uh, like uh, SARM AC two six two twenty milligrams one day. The next day I'll take like twenty milligrams of Rad one forty. The next day I'll take twenty milligrams of uh, uh, LGD forty thirty three, and then I'll take like a fifty milligram Anadrol before a workout that I'm pretty sure I'm actually going to work out hard, which is, which is like maybe three days a week. Mm -hmm. And then I might take like an Anavar, like, um, what, 20 what milligram. 20. Okay. Yeah. On top of a SARM or something like that. So it's just, it's just really low dosages of these things that I have no side. I obviously don't have any side effects from. How's the hair loss then? How, how's, how are you maintaining that? I could see there's some color in it. Oh well, yeah. This is all done up. This is all done up, but yeah. yeah, I do have a lot of hair loss. But the hair yeah, I'm loss... experiencing some myself recently. It's it's kind of like wow. Mm -hmm. I think it's stress related, but either way, I'm experiencing some myself. Not no, oh, I, I I lost. I actually just published a video about um, hair loss not that long ago because uh, Connor was getting advice on his hair, but he had hair transplants and he was trying to keep the hair. But Leo uh, I'll get a video on hair loss. What? Leo had a great video on hair loss. Mm, he was obsessed with the hair stuff. Actually, yes. I didn't really care about hair loss that much for myself. I mean, I help, I've helped a lot of other people through hair loss. Like, actually, of all the, of all the people that I help with stuff, I'd say that most of them I help with some, love, some kind of hair loss situation. And it's just like troubleshooting different things that can cause hair loss. And it's usually DHT, of course, right? right. But but actually stress and lack of sleep and bad diet, all of these things. Stress, I'm you. telling you, the stress is what yeah. did it for me. After this. Well, that, I, that's what I'm that. building. That's yeah. what I'm building up to is that I lost most of my hair from stress mm -hmm. as a lawyer before I ever got on YouTube. Like the pictures of me in their very early YouTube days, my hair was was 
most of the hair loss I had already at that time. My hair was immaculate in all those videos, and now it's kind of taking a backseat. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you experiment with oral minoxidil? Uh, no. Why? Because I just don't want more hair growing all over the place. Um, I know it affects the scalp more, but still, I just don't need uh, more hair. I, I put minoxidil on the scalp anyways. What do you use, a liquid or a foam? It's just a spray from here in Thailand. It's over the counter, yeah. What strength is it? 5%. 5%. Leo talked about a 10% a formula that people were using for their facial hair. Actually, he, he was when he was here. He was giving me the ten percent stuff. He yeah, and he said the ten percent is so much better than the five percent. And he left a link in some of his videos to where you could get it from a place in India. Mm -hmm. God, of, I don't of know. I mean, this was something he and I would debate about whether five percent is better than ten percent. This was one of our one of our things that we disagreed about, I guess. But I wouldn't say no. I don't know. Disagree. One of but our we conversations. Did facial hair really like, well. He helped a lot what? of people. With their, he helped a lot of people with their facial hair that wanted a beard, uh, with yeah. the micro needling and the and the ten percent. I mean, I've seen some of the before and after pictures. It was pretty pretty amazing. He talked about the Asian guy that grew the beard. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. So so when when Leo was, um, you know, out and appeared never to he was never going to come back on YouTube again. Right. Uh, I said to myself, what a waste of talent this is. Like all of this happened because of, you know, uh, being a certain type of a aggressive approach that, that it just got in the way for him. Right. If he wasn't, if he didn't have that aggressive side so much, like, like, like he thought he had to have it. And also some of it's not controllable. He thought he had to have it to be a champion. That's why he and called himself a lion, the lion, because he wanted to be the most powerful force, remember? Yeah. And so I understand the goal, but I don't think that his approach would have gotten him there, but I wanted to see him get there. Right. And I, and I also, I knew, but you know, but I was, I was conflicted because I knew that, okay, let's put it this way. I wanted to make sure that me helping him would help you not harm you. Right. And yeah, anyways, it would have, it would have all worked in the end. It didn't, well, didn't nothing worked out as planned, but anyways, it was making progress. But just so you know, also more of my thinking was just like, he was a great talent and it was such a waste of talent watching him just, he collapsed and he just stayed collapsed and there was no sign of him putting the alcoholism, the, al the alcoholism. Yeah. He yeah. Put him down a negative spiral. Yeah. And he, he never would have gotten out of it. The only when way he, he got out of it is because where, of that. Where was he when he came to see you? you? He wasn't in America. He was somewhere. He was with his Portugal. father somewhere. Portugal. With his father. Well, that's where his father goes between there and Dubai. But, um, I, I think when when he left there, I don't know if he was still spending time with him. He he had a, you know, he had another friend there who was spending time with. So that's what. What what made him come out to see you? Did, I mean, did you convince him to come see you? How was that? He planned on coming for a long time, but he never really like. He didn't like Asian girls. That was the main problem. Um, and he wasn't familiar with it you know, with Thailand. And he heard like some negative things about Thailand that just made him think it wasn't like a, a good place to be. So I'd been trying to get him out to Thailand for a long time, uh, you know, during, after the collapse, but he, he would keep changing his numbers and he was unreachable. And I don't remember how we ended up connecting again. Maybe he messaged he probably once he got a new number, yeah, that's what it was. He would ask me questions sometimes about things. So I think he reached out to me and asked me a question from one of his new numbers. And then, uh, yeah, he was, it's like sometimes I'd talk to him and he'd be in a really good place. And sometimes he'd be in like, not that good of a place. 
And so like when he was sort of like in a certain mood, he wanted to get out and try something new. And when he was in another mood, he wanted to stay. And it's like, you know, kind of dealing with different wants and needs at different times. So finally something happened in Portugal that he had to get out quickly and uh, he needed somewhere safe and where he had, you know, someone to, I don't know. It's, it's not like a, it's not like he's a baby and I need to take care of him. I mean, he needed a powerful, friend. strong man, but like we all need friends, you yeah. know, when we're at a rock bottom and you don't have a lot of places that you can, or want to go. He can go back to Dubai anytime he wanted to. He couldn't go to America, right? Was there was there a warrant for him in America? Correct me if I'm wrong, but for the for the thing that domestic issue with with Lucy. He couldn't he was never gonna go back to America. But, but he couldn't or he could? What was there a warrant or not? No, there's not a warrant. He mentally, because of what happened he felt like America betrayed him. Like, like all, like kind of like the same thing, like with a friend that has a falling out, he felt like America betrayed him. America's no longer his ally. America's no longer his friend. He's very deep like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, can, and, we, can we address the rumor that you guys had a falling out? Is that a rumor or was that, is that, is there some, some truth behind that. No, I, I never, I never had a falling out with him. No. You, you never, he never flashed on you. You guys never had a fight or anything. Oh, I mean, he went off on me every day. <laughs> You're so passive, Tony. You're so passive. He did that to me once, and I was like, "Whoa!" I was thinking, I was like, Whoa, "Is this guy going to kill me one day or something?" Because he flashed so hard, I was actually a little bit nervous. I was like, "Am I going to have to fight?" You know, I didn't want to be in that situation, but. I can imagine that happen because I, I know him and I know that he does that. But I, I'm imagining I know you and you just let it roll over and everything was fine, right? I mean, I'm gonna I'm most people could never understand what I've been through, but like I've had a lot of crazy girlfriends, abusive yeah. girlfriends. So I'm used to I'm used to some character traits that other people would not be able to handle for more than 10 seconds. Okay. I have a lot of patience. You're right. I've never had any conflict with anybody. I've never no. really fought with anybody that I can think of type thing. So I uh, actually, you know, I'm probably the only guy in the Western world that, um, could live with Leo like that, yeah. And he wouldn't take it to heart. Like you just realized that's part of his personality. Because, like you said, he calms down like 10, 15 minutes later, as if almost nothing happened. But if you're not used yeah. to that, you, you know, I it, it, it hit me hard because I was going through something. You know, I was dealing with my stepson dying, and I just wasn't emotionally ready to be able to be. He scolded me, you know, he, I, I was late. I shouldn't have been late, but he, he, he literally, he scolded me like I was a child. And I just, I just, honestly, I did, didn't know how to handle it. I thought, I, I don't know. I just, it, it really struck me as odd because I wasn't, but you know what? Now I'm now looking back at it. I realized he cared about me and he just he wanted to like say, you know, you don't do this. You don't do that. You don't be this way and don't be that way. And you know at that time, I wasn't ready to hear it, but looking back on the moment, I can see how much love and compassion he had for me. It was just his way of, you know, getting it out that I wasn't used to. Well, here's here's the most ironic thing ever to 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 make it clear. And how, well, here's what what made me understand what it is. Also, I mean, there's there's many different angles to it, and they could talk about it for days. Um, like as far as a psychology you know, anal analysis, I think he's probably one of the most interesting people you could, you could ever analyze. Totally. Uh, but baby mama and her style is what made me understand Leo the most. I can see which that. Is that. And it's ironic because Leo and baby mama hated each other. Yes, she told me. 
Yeah. Top, you know, if you if you if they each listed their top ten people they hated the most, they both hated each other the most. Like number one. <laughs> She yeah, really, but, but, he really despised her. He wanted you. He wants you to get away from her. He said a lot of very negative things about her on video. Yeah, too. yeah he said it on video also. So I'm not saying anything as important. Yeah, but but so and there's there's so there's a lot of good things about Baby Mama and a lot of bad things. The same thing. There's good things and bad things about Leo and and, and all of us. Um, but one of the bad thing, well, one of the things about Baby Mama is her like almost way of showing love is is what I consider abusive. And if I'm, if I react to it, I, it gets worse. Like she will emotionally abuse me. And I've seen, then, I've seen her scold yeah. you. <laughs> and then if, if I react, I, I have to react like I don't care. Yeah. I can't, I can't bow down underneath her and do what she says or she'll control my life. And that's not a yeah. good outcome. And I, I also can't fight with that. her. Yeah, I can't fight with her because if I do, she's willing to. There's no, there's no, there's no distance she's not willing to go to. Yeah, there's no you know, limit. Like, so take it all like away. Like me, I want to, I want to live. I want to protect the people around me. I have a lot of responsibility. I have children. Like, I can't just think about fighting in a battle. But like, these are two people, baby mama and and Leo. Both these are both like fight to the death type people, and. Uh, so I, I realized finally, and it was more recently that, wow, baby mama gets off on this. Like she's not, it's not that she, I don't know, it makes her feel powerful or something. Sure. And then that feels good to her. Like abusing me makes her feel powerful. And then she feels good. And then she, 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 puts then she gets horny. Then she gets horny. She verbally <laughs> abuses me and then gets horny. So like some people want to be in relationships where they fight and make up and fight and make up. Yeah. And um, usually you don't have this relationship between a man and a man, man yeah. or, you know, heterosexual man and heterosexual man. Sure. But that's kind of what it was like with, with Leo is like, he wanted to he like being the aggressive person was what, he uh okay so I, I i i was trying to calibrate him to be able to get the aggressive out in a controlled way and that way he didn't have to lose control at situations when it it actually hurts his mission and and hurts him being able to deliver his value so i what i was doing was i was creating a situation where he could channel his aggression and i uh yeah i did i did it was amazing it worked i mean it got him back on youtube and it got him functional again and it got him healthy again and and like it it saved him like i figured out how to i figured out how to nurture leo in a way that that would allow him to tap into his talents and deliver them to the world. You were able and to do what no one else could. There's no one else in the world that could have done this. No. No. Who who else would have sacrificed what I sacrificed to do this for someone? Okay. I, but I don't want to sound selfless. There was huge value in it for me. Sure. You see, always like like with you too, like hanging out with you and like learning and be and being productive together. You know, from Coach Trevor, I learned uh, all this crazy hardcore bodybuilding stuff, and it was really stimulating to me. From Leo, I figured I could learn and become the best brain biohacker for what I like to do, my style. And I just didn't know how to do it without Leo. Like, I couldn't think of anybody else who's as good at biohacking the brain as Leo was that I could actually spend time with on a daily basis and like absorb everything that they know and, and then take it to the next level. Cause it, the same thing, like absorbed everything Trevor knew. And then I figured out how to build on it from there. Like if I had to do the research to catch up to where Leo was, it would take me so long. I don't have time 
to get caught up like that. Usually but it's if I can learn from Leo in person all day on a daily basis, I could learn so quickly I could get caught up and then I could build on it because I have this, uh, I have the, I have some special talent when it comes to biohacking and I haven't figured out exactly what it is that gives me this perspective, but um, I wanted to apply it to the brain like I had applied it to the muscle before. And uh, so I, that's what I was going to get out of it. Or I did get out of it because I wasn't, I didn't, I also, I didn't realize he was like such a red pill guy and going to help me fix my harem and all that stuff. Like that was, that was a huge bonus that, uh, that gave a lot of value to me too. So like I gave him tremendous value and he, he gave me tremendous value. Um, Would you say that the time you were, you guys were together, was he at that time was, were you guys best friends? Yeah. I mean, I'm really was, sorry for your loss, Tony. I, I really am. I, I know a lot of people don't. They say a lot of crazy negative stuff out there, but I don't think anybody understands that you lost your best friend. And yeah, really and, and and like people all have good and bad in them, but like <clears throat> I I I I think I could get rid of Leo's bad, and I think I could accentuate his good, and and he also was helping me with that, so. Uh, he, he wasn't drinking. Yeah, I, right? I just, I just, you know, the, the, the part of the criticism that I, I wanted to address also was that there was a lot of people that really hated him and they thought they, they discounted everything that he said because they hated him. Well, you don't have to like, you can have a professor at school that you hate, but you still learned stuff that was very valuable to you, you know? So, so like, I also wanted, you know, this is funny because people want me to some of my audience wants me to do a lot of crazy, crazy stuff. And some of them just want me to talk science stuff. So I could see like the audience that just wants me to talk science stuff is kind of like how I saw Leo, which is that the drama, I just didn't want to know about it. I just didn't want to deal with it. I just wanted to focus on like, how do I get the most positive out of him and minimize the drama and negativity. And so for the people that, hated leo and the drama like i i wanted to show them like almost a case study example like here's someone who had aggression and hatred in their heart and it's almost like a religious thing like he found jesus you know it's not it is though it's kind of like that like he found jesus and he found some higher power that he didn't have to resort to like some of the dark demons inside and uh, yeah, I mean, you, you you think you were his way out of alcoholism, like because from my understanding, I don't know what you did. Maybe just your friendship and your bond with him was enough for him to let it go. Is that what it was? Um, he drank alcohol mostly because he was lonely. Yeah, yeah. and then it becomes a, a physical addiction that he can't stop. So, but he did when he when he came to see you. He he let it go, right? As soon as he stopped feeling lonely, yes, which was pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. Did he have his it's, own program to detox so he didn't go through any of the the you know like alcohol related seizures or delirium tremors or any of that? He took a lot of benzos because that made him stop shaking. Yes, that, was, that, that helps. A lot. He was shaking all the time like this. That's what happens with alcohol. Yeah. He took the benzo and it calmed him, calmed him down. Yeah. He's very, you know, he he's he's very smart, and and you know, I I know I you, without question he knew he knew what he was doing, you know, and I'm glad that you were able to be his friend because he needed that, and it's really sad that he went through that that dark that dark side, but I'm glad you were there for him at least to get him out, and we saw a lot of very positive things before this tragedy happened, and and I, I can only imagine you know, how far you guys would have gone if it had this not happened. So when people yeah. look the finger at you, they like they say that they don't realize that you lost your best friend. And that's really, it's really yeah. sad that people are so negative and they say these hateful things about you. You, you know, friends. you know, what's, you know, you know, what's really tough about it is that I wish, I wish we had more mutual friends that I was trying to help, uh, 
I don't know, build something for... Would it be great if the three of us were to do stuff together? I was always looking forward to you mending things and then all three of us doing stuff together. That was what I was hoping. It, it, it would have... Uh, I mean, okay. He would have been friends with you again. That would it would just it was just gonna take time, but yeah, that would have been fixed. Um, in I never did anything to hurt him, you know. I never did anything to hurt him, you know. Yeah, I'm not that kind the, of the the. But the problem is that he he would never collaborate with you right. because you don't have enough subscribers. Right. <laughs> so, so that's I mean that's kind of a weird thing. But you you could be friends, but I, he wouldn't collaborate. I'm trying to think what he would what he would do. I don't know. That was kind of a weird thing. I'm I kind of the opposite, but I, I understand the I, I understand. Oh well, that's the solution. You could have you could get more subscribers. Well, you know, I hope everyone likes this video, shares it, and subscribes because this video might actually get me more subscribers since I haven't posted in a while. But that's part of it. I've got to keep posting and. Um, it's, it's been difficult for me focusing on my son because I'm pretty much the person who raises him for the most part. Um, not that his mother doesn't, but I, I do spend more time with him than she does. And, um, but you know, he's getting to older now to the point where I feel like I've, I've laid that foundation down. That's not going to change. And so I do have more time. Um, and I will be making more videos and I hope my subscribers who've been very loyal to me, i still have the 12,000 subscribers I had from the beginning. And if, if you guys share these videos, like them and make a comment and get the algorithm going, I promise you that I will come back and I will make more videos, not just with, with Tony and also on Rumble and on YouTube to promote our, our content on Rumble too. I know you guys have been wanting to hear from me for a while. I'm coming back with this video, which is gonna be strong. And I will be coming back with more videos. Like I said, we're gonna do some of it on YouTube, and then we're going to lead you to Rumble, where the uh, the hardcore stuff that we don't want to get censored will be. Mm. Okay, yeah. What, what and what I'll do is I'll just wait until things calm down more. Like I sh I I probably I wasn't even going to talk about Leo that uh, until later because I, I don't want to stir anything up. You know, I'm I'm trying to choose. I'm trying to be honest, but I'm trying not to like stir anything up. Also, you know. I'm not trying to create drama. I don't need views or anything, right? So, but like as a friend, um, I think the best thing I can do is put some of this content out there and education out there that Leo was working on because that's what his passion was. And, but I just don't want to do it while it's met with negativity. Like if people don't want to hear it, then I don't want to force it on people again. And I, and, and I also like, it's going to hurt my feelings, I guess you could say, which sounds lame, but like if I put the time and energy into something that I think Leo would be happy with, and then people just poop all over it, like I will, I'll just say, why did I do that for then? Why, why did I do that? Like I'm doing it because I think that Leo's fans want to see it. I think that, you know, but the problem is I'm not seeing Leo fans. I'm seeing Leo stalkers and trolls. Well, anybody that sees this video that wants to make a comment that if you want to see the content that Tony has, please make that comment in this video and Tony will see it. And then, you know, we'll come through for you guys because we know that you appreciate the content. The ones that really care, not the trolls, you appreciate the content. And I, as Tony said, he has a lot of great content to put out there and I would like to see it myself. So. I hope that other people make comments in this video talking about wanting to see this content that hasn't been released yet. And let's see if we can get Tony to do that, guys. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm, never forget Leo and I'll always want to do something to honor him. Um, so if it's five years from now, I'll do it five years from now. If it's one month from now, I'll do it one month from now. But like, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to do it and then have it pooped on. So uh, I just wait till certain people out there who are trying to destroy his legacy and make it a negative thing and cause drama uh, until that calms down. So again, could be five years from now, could be a month from now, but yeah, when that happens. I hope this video helps, Tony. I think, I think we, 
we've made a lot of breakthrough in this video. I mean, usually you and I, we talk, we talk like this over the phone. We don't really get to talk like this on video, but I think this is a great video for people who really want to know what's going on with you. Um, and also, you know, how you've been feeling about all this because it's, you haven't really had a chance to, to open up. And I, I'm really, I'm really thankful that you, you gave everybody this opportunity and I'm glad I was able to, to do this interview with you, especially since there's a lot of rumors going around that you may be on the run from what, you know what I mean? There's he's not on the run guys. This is, again, I talk to him almost every day. Well, I, again, to be transparent, I'm running from crazy people, but I'm not running from authorities. You know? uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I hope these, I hope these crazy people, if you guys watch this video, please stop. You're not, you're not helping him. I mean, it's, I get it. You want a reward or something like that, but none of you guys know what happened. Nobody knows what happened. If they did, then there would be a solution to this. And unfortunately, until that, until that does happen, nothing you guys do now by harassing Tony is going to help at all. You're just harassing him. I wish you'd all just stop. He's a good friend of mine. He doesn't need this. And I want to see him put back out content. And Tony, I hope, I hope we do more great videos together. I look forward to the next video that we could do where we put this whole thing to rest and then we can get back to some of the original content that people liked. And, uh, you know, I know that that's a, a big part of you. You know, there's a part of you that wants to show your private life, which is fine. And there's also a part of you that's always been into biohacking. And, uh, you know, I know it started with Trevor and I added some icing onto that cake and then Leo added a cake onto that icing. And so now we need to put an icing on top of that cake and make it a nice big double layered cake with two, so I'd like to see it <laughs> for everybody to really enjoy. And um, yeah, man, I wish everybody out there the best. Um, again, you know, if you want to get in touch with Tony, you can contact me at guruaminali at gmail.com. And if you would, we're going to leave the link uh, in the description. Also, we're going to put a, a clip of this at the end of this for my fund me page. I appreciate everybody that has helped. Thank you for your prayers everything that your prayers and your support means so much to me. If you could even just donate $20 a month, I, I think I'm going to be going to trial uh, early next year. It looks like right now we're, we're doing really well. Lawyers are doing really well. I've lost everything that I have. All I have is my knowledge. and I will not lose that. So I'm willing to share it with everybody. Um, and I appreciate everything you're doing for me. Tony, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interview you. And, you know, just tell everybody, how, you know, just let everybody know, uh, you know, life is going to go on and we're both going to do really well. And, you know, we appreciate everyone's support. And for all the people that do care about both of us, thank you very much. And for all the people that are addressing rumors, the rumors are laid to rest right now. Here he is. And here I am. And we're stronger than ever. And we're going to keep on going. God bless you all. Tony, thank you very much. Be swole and swole, friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution.